Following up this uh, afternoon on the big story here on Republic TV for activism for a price, I'm joined by uh, Union Minister for Power, Energy and uh, uh, Non-Renewable Energy, Piyush Goyal. Piyush Goyal, good afternoon. Uh, through the day today, Republic TV has uh, put out an expose on the role of money and the role of church figures in the Kudan Kulam protests. Uh, we have shown essentially in this expose that there are people who are in quote unquote environmental activists who for money are willing to funnel money through political parties for yet another round of the anti-nuclear protests. Uh, on this, we stung a person called Uday Kumar who is an environmental activist and he was the convener of one of the heads of the anti kudan Kulam nuclear plant. He was willing to accept money from foreign sources through our reporter who pretended to be a student studying in a British university and he suggested that the money be sent in cash through some foreign Indian routes. Now, if the first is the moral and legal part of it. But the fact is, Mr. Mr. Piyush Goyal, that there are still people in India who are willing to organize anti-nuclear protests for a price. He did a rethink of it later and then later said, I'm not willing to accept the money. But overall, isn't this a matter of concern for the central government that this is happening in India? Well, uh, any such instances are a matter of concern, not only for the government, but for the people of India also. And uh, such guns for hire and NGOs or foreign sources who indulge in this kind of activities certainly need to be put in the dock. We need to take stringent action. And uh, I'm sure the expose that you have just described to me will also be taken note of by the authorities. Are you surprised, Mr. Piyush Goyal, that there were members of the church who were involved in the Kudan Kulam protests. Why would any religious organization have a role in funneling, creating and provoking unrest against one of India's biggest nuclear power plants? I don't see the connection there. It truly is surprising, though I would not suspect that this is... Uh something organized by a religious dispensation. It could be individuals who could be behind it. But certainly there are certain NGOs and there are foreign sources who have been indulging in this kind of activity, which uh, this government has taken already taken stringent action upon. As you are aware, the foreign contribution permissions that were granted to a number of organizations have been cancelled when it was found that they were indulging in anti-national activities, not maintaining their accounts properly, not submitting proper records to the authorities. And uh, it, is, it is reasonably clear now that such NGOs, and there are many of these NGOs, are actually playing a very, very anti-national role in and affecting the development of, of India. So, for example, there's been some NGOs working against coal mining, I would love all those people who are doing the activities against coal mining or those uh, like this expose against nuclear power plants to probably shut off their power in their home and live in darkness. If they are not willing to support generation of power in this country, then they should, in the first instance, their own organizations should stop consuming power. Well, they say, they say this is about, uh, you know, they say this is a civic movement. What I cannot understand, Mr. Piyush Goyal, is that if this is a civic movement, if this is a movement for protecting the environment, then why is there A, a money angle? And B, why are members of the church from fathers to priests to bishops, you know, working to keep the movement alive? In fact, in one of our stings, one of the members of the church says money is coming from Italy. Funds and support are coming from Italy. Funds and support are coming from Germany. It seems very suspicious. It raises serious questions, Mr. Piyush Goel, about whether this is a people's the, movement or not. I think it's a... I, I very clearly think it's, it's not a people's movement because the people of India want development. They want a better quality of life. They are looking for a future for their children 
where they can be good citizens in this country. So I suspect this is clearly not a people's movement. NGOs who are indulging in this, NGOs who have been taking money from foreign sources and indulging in such activities are clearly anti-nationals. They're anti-development. And the people of India are seeing through such forces, which is very much evident from the fact that m more and more of these agitations are losing the support of the common man. They are becoming almost like small spurt of activities, probably funded by foreign sources. And uh, very clearly, the first step was taken by this government when we cut off the foreign funding of many of these uh, such uh, anti-national NGOs. And I do feel that exposes such as the one that you have done today on Republic TV or the people of India getting more and more aware of these uh, illegal nefarious activities will do our Indian development story a lot of good. One, one, one last point. Uh, people work through camouflage, through a disguise. In a particular case, for example, Mr. Uday Kumar can't take money through his NGO because as you said, the FCRA under Section 12, which deals with the grant of certification of registration, you have taken that back. But then these people can start political parties. In this particular instance, Mr. Piyush Goel, Mr. Uday Kumar told our reporter that you can give the money to my party. I will tell you my party account. And then that money will be funneled in. So it's not through NGOs, it's through political parties. Would your government not intervene to scrap the registration of these political parties? Because people are no longer operating as NGOs, it appears. You form a political well, party. This is, truly this is a incredible. Very... Yeah, this is... yeah, this is truly incredible. We've never heard this kind of thing before. And uh, I wouldn't know the legal aspects of it, whether our government can de-recognize them. But I certainly do believe that the Election Commission of India would also be watching this and will take serious note of such uh, political parties. And possibly this may lead to some good that all such political parties, these fly-by-night political parties, should be investigated and corrective action taken by the Election Commission. And should the Election Commission refer any such instances uh, to the government, I'm sure the government will take serious action on that.